Hey there! <laughs> what do you say there, world? Welcome to the Racers Recap. My name's Justin. I'm James Earl. It's Corey. Diana is in the chat room, and we are lucky and fortunate enough to be joined by this season's Team Ocean Rescue and newly engaged <laughs> Lucas and... Hi! Hi! What's up, y'all? What's up? I'm just going to start waving like this. Just sit the whole time like this with your hands. Just model it. That's what I would do. Your wrist is going to get tired. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Got that stroke wrist. I can, yeah. I can. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, how is the race? How's it been since the race? I know you guys are uh, unfortunately got on the bad side of the Jody Army, the only people you don't want to piss off in this current season's fan base. Yeah. Anybody else? You would you would have heard like six people say something. That people, you got like forty thousand fans. So, are you guys uh, soaking up the good, or are you fighting against the bad? Um, you know, I'm I'm very thin skinned. I'm a very sensitive kind of compassionate kind of person, and I would really not say mean things to other people if I could help it. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. We knew what we were getting ourselves into, and I kind of went into it thinking that, you know, feeling a certain way, and now that I'm out of it, I feel a completely different way. <laughs> and it's crazy how things just go, and they change from one moment to the next, especially as the episodes air and, um, and the edits, man. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to get it out of the way right now in the beginning so we could focus on the good stuff. And yeah. uh, so, editing is definitely a big part of the race. Yeah. The way it's making it look is like next week it's gonna go down, and we are gonna see all the claws and the fighting, and nobody's gonna be like all prim and proper. And it seems about the right time in the race when people start. Oh, no, this is when people start getting really tired, really hungry. You're you've lost ten pounds by this point in time. Like, oh, I gained. I gained. Honey. How did you gain? I lost like twenty pounds during the race. How did you gain? Oh, I wish. Well, because when you're vegetarian, you know a lot of places think that. You know, bread and cheese are. I think we eat a lot of crackers yeah, and we, chips whenever you could be, stuff your face. Because you're you're so hungry half the race, and you know you're so limited. So we ate a lot of carbs. Gotcha. <laughs> and, I, and I wasn't training as much as I normally do. Like on a daily basis, I I you know. And like oh, so this said, is like a step yeah. down for you. Like. Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah. And well, like you said, James, it starts to get more competitive, and you don't want to get kicked off the race. So you know, you start to do what you can to stay on. Oh, Which yeah. means you store up your fat. Hey, <laughs> that's full places. That's exactly why last week I was saying I was excited for the double elimination episode because I know it's going to get more cutthroat as we go yeah. forward. So, I just want to say hey to Eric from One Team Firefighters Hi. in the chat. I love Eric. Diana's in the chat, and Team Ocean Rescue is actually in the chat currently as well. So, I don't... thank you guys. Feel free to thumbs up, like, and share so everybody else can join and have some fun. You guys ready to get this started? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, leg four. We're going from Morocco to Nice to Saint Tropez, France. Some of the most beautiful places in all of Europe. And you guys got to see this so as soon as you get there. It's like right from Africa. We're going to one of the most beautiful places in Europe. Uh, for initial reactions, uh, James Earl, when you saw Saint Tropez, France, very jealous. Or you're like, I'm tired of France already. Uh, so France was not my happiest moment, so uh, <laughs> living in France is a little tough. No, it was an awesome. I think there was a beautiful lead that they got to do some cool stuff in. But, like, there's two places that, like, always make my stomach churn, and it's France and India. So, like, <laughs> it's tough for me on those two places. <clears throat> well, I, I hear you. James Earl? Um, no, James, I'm sorry. Corey, what do you think about France? I mean, this I, is, like, six seasons in a row of six. Five out of six seasons there in France? I mean, it was, I liked it. It showed a whole different part of France than what we experienced when we were there. I mean, we did all winter. We did all snow uh, the whole time we were in Chamonix. So I, I enjoyed seeing a different part of France. I didn't mind it, but I, I definitely was paying attention that it's been so many in a row, it seems. I don't, I don't want to divert, but I have a crush on somebody who's in the chat room right now. After these last two episodes, no, nah, Jen, Jen from Team uh, Team Extremes in the chat room. Jen, okay. I saw you on TV last night. You were on the at the TV restaurant doing your like commentary. She's so famous, y'all. She's famous. Well, that's cool. I we really appreciate you guys when you come hang out in the chat room, uh, so we can answer the questions that they have. All right. So Cody has no idea that uh, what Saint Tropez is, but Jess knows what it is. It's an island. No, I think she said in Ireland. 
In Ireland, even way that's worse. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna, I wouldn't have known what that was. Like I half the time said, I was reading those things, I didn't know where we were going. I thought she said, "No, it's an island," and I'm like, "No, it's like a peninsula or something." Like, it's just kind of. But anyway, uh, I I love the fact that Cody's straight up honest. If it ain't American, I don't know what it is. Like, it, it just seems like if it doesn't have red, white, and blue, no clue what it is. And he's just a dirt old boy. He is good old Texas boy. So we got a very close race up in the front. We got Team Yale, Team Indy, Team Extreme, Well Strong, Big Brother, all within what, like four minutes of each other, right up in the front. Yeah, really, really tight. But obviously, it doesn't matter. Everybody's on the same flight. Another, another bunch point. You guys okay with bunch points every leg? I think it's just something that you just have to accept at this point. And remember, when you're on the race, like. You hate the bunch points when you're at the front. When you're at the back, you're like, we yes, please. I yes. love yes. yes. For us, we, it was we working love out. Them. We, we were, at that point, we were like, okay, yes, yeah. yes. So you love them now, but Ned's led, you're going to be like, damn it, there's a bunch of points. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's caught up already? Yeah, I hate it. All right, so everybody's on the same flight. Uh, Team Extreme says adrenaline is, adrenaline is addictive. Okay. All right, see, this is one thing I want to talk about. Adrenaline is the one thing that people cannot prepare for on the race. You guys happen to have a job where adrenaline is probably the thing that sets you off. You see yes. somebody in yes. danger and it's like poof, instant adrenaline. So is there any kind of training to help deal with adrenaline? Um, I like I think it, it, when, it, when you're talking about our job, we're very well prepared. We're very much – we have our protocols. We have our training. We know exactly what to do in a situation, and we're really good at – at making it up as we go if we need to improvise but when it comes to the race you're not trained to do that anything like that shit quite frankly so it's it's like a slap in the face especially the first leg you know if you if, if you didn't have the benefit of going on the racers recaps and really looking at the behind the scenes you have no idea and we had like we were told four days before that we were going wow. so <laughs> wow so y'all yeah, got like, fits and everything together that quickly we, well, I try to watch as many seasons as I could really yeah, quick. So I was yeah. like every day just cool. watching, watching, watching it. But you don't get wow. to see all what, what it takes. How do people get max? How do you, where do you eat? Where do you go to the bathroom? Like none of that's shown. And it's through the editing. And we were trying to figure this out in the first five legs of this race until, you know, we got to France yeah, and man. we started to figure it out. In Morocco itself, before we left, we actually, we, we spoke Spanish there. We actually did very well in Morocco. And when we it's were at the travel agent. agency... They gave us a map. He spoke Central. perfect Spanish, yeah. FYI. They gave us a map. We were finally excited. We knew where we were going. And trying to find that first location, we, we realized that they gave us the wrong direction. So we went back and got better directions. So we were positive. We were like, oh, we, we got this. We're going to San Tropez. We have water. We're going to go sail. It's going to be perfect. And oh. then it wasn't that at all. <laughs> <laughs> and then the improvising came. Yeah, we were actually, in, to get into San Tropez, we were actually right behind Big Brother. And uh, they, turned we, they turned off and we turned. And at that point, I thought we thought we were in San Tropez. And that's mm -hmm. where you see the whole kind of argument, me breaking down and frustrated because I was sick of being lost. I was sick of getting lost. Yeah, he was just really frustrated <clears throat> being lost. And, you know, as athletes, you know, it's really hard to train really hard for something, go into something 100% prepared and have the confidence and know that you're going to do it. And then on the flip side, going to something that you're absolutely not prepared for um, yeah. whatsoever, besides the skills that you might, may or may not have. And now, let me let hard. me ask you a question. I guess, Corey and um, you two, uh, the self-drive legs, it seems like whenever there's a self-drive leg, it really breaks down somebody. One team seems to really break down another team, and the yeah. self-drive seems to do it. it. Does that seem to add something extra to cause you to riff? No, I think it was equally <clears throat> ridiculous, our getting lost, even with calves and walking. <laughs> I think my walking might have been worse. <laughs> and they, they do an excellent job on the race to yeah. put those directions or put those clues just far enough to make you second guess everything. Yeah. So yeah. you're you you're driving, you're driving, you're like, oh my God, we're so really lost. And no, if you would have kept going, you would have found the Five location. Minutes, and it right it's just, they have it perfectly done where you second guess yourself every time. I mean, I would definitely say the driving adds to a frustration. It, it was one of the only times that Tyler and I fought in uh, the entire time we were on the race. And for us, it 
every team fought that leg. Matt and Dana luckily fought more than any of us that leg, so they didn't really show anyone else arguing. But I know I, I validate any of the frustrations the self-drive teams feel because I know every single one of the teams that were left when we were in Dubai on my season fought that day over driving because it's like it's just so frustrating to not know where you're going and to and not have speak a language. So. And you always want to blame – somebody always wants to blame somebody else. It's hard to accept blame in those situations. Well, yeah, here's absolutely. the issue with that too is when you're getting frustrated in real life, you have all of these other outlets to get your frustrations, right? So you can like text your best friend. You can walk away and like just yell at the wall. But, like on the use race, GPS. Right. Yeah, use <laughs> GPS. But like on the race, it's just you and your partner, like period. So like the only person you have to express any emotion to is your partner. So if you're frustrated, you're going to take it out on them. If you're happy, like you're going to share in the happiness. But like there's – no feelings. other avenue. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we created pineapple. <laughs> pineapple! <laughs> but we should have used it in this life. But, yeah. It but. was it was more of a, for the record, uh, a, an emotional safe word more than a, a any other word. kind of safe word. You know? I, don't, I don't know about that. We're going to get to that later. Yeah. We'll talk about that later because there's some other some, some stuff that, that, that you kind of throw in here that leads to me to think otherwise. I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we'll, figure, we'll get there. Team Slam Dunk says sorry to all of the 29 seasons of past races that he yelled at saying, I, <laughs> it is harder than it looks. We, I am sorry, Mr. NBA champ is apologizing. Do you guys agree it's a lot harder than it looks on TV? Yeah, absolutely. It, just, there's so many things that are not shown on there that I think on purpose they kind of hide that information. So when people get on that race, they it's can just, have that kind of frustration. You can, you can have that frustration. That they can have people like me that break down. <laughs> and even, I mean, you guys as competitors and us that we just finished doing this race, um, I don't want to share all that information. The next person oh, no. who comes in has to be able to deal with that stress. It's part of the game. Yeah. I share enough, but like, there's still so some mean. secrets. Yeah, <laughs> so mean. Yes. Well, they have but, to they have to dig deep and watch every episode of Races Recap, and you put it all together, I mean. and then you got them. But I still think even if you did all of that, like in your head, you can't figure out how hard it's actually going to be. Yeah. Like yeah. I think you'd be like, oh, it's going to be hard, but like whatever you're imagining, it's much worse. Yes. All right. So Team Ocean Rescue sitting here talking about marriage, of course, and Brittany's <laughs> parents are not sure Lucas wants to marry her. Right. How do they feel now, Brittany? Uh, I mean, he's extremely happy. He's My father is an amazing guy. He's so supportive, and I think that he has nothing but my best interests at heart, and he is hands down the most amazing guy I have ever had in my life. And I've had a couple other, you know, wonderful people that have been like fathers to me too but my father just holds a special place in my heart so and we and i don't want people to get the wrong idea we get along with him i mean i i, he, I love him just as much and um the family we get along very well his family my family are fa actually our fathers met before we met <laughs> i know wow. it sounds True weird story. True her story. dad's a boat captain and my father's a pilot and my father flew to the bahamas in eleuthera and her dad actually drove Delivered a, a boat, boat over there and he flew him back. back and talked and then one day, the first kind of week that we started to date, I told my dad, hey, look, can you fly me this girl over to the Bahamas? And we flew over there. She came back and she- Hold on, over. that's such a pimp move. And dad, can you fly <laughs> me this girl over to the Bahamas? Oh, yeah. I mean, hey, you know. <laughs> so back. <laughs> I was the one, okay, Justin, accept it. I have no I game, it. so I had to use everything I could. <laughs> hey. Hashtag I no game. Hashtag, you flew, so you got a private plane to the Bahamas. Hashtag game. All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, firefighters are having a hard time with the stick shift. Let's get to it. They said something that it's not a normal stick shift. You have to do something. But they wind up looking like Fred Flintstone getting out, pushing it, moving it back and forth. Oh, it Explain the stick shift to us, please. I grew up with a stick shift car. My first car was stick shift. Difference is when you get to Europe, I've never seen or I've never driven a Renault. And I've never seen the R and the first gear next to each other where you can't get to the R. Every time we would try to push it over, you, you, you would, every time you would try, every time I would push it over, <laughs> I would be in first gear. So apparently you have to lift it, get out of the locking system and there's, then go to the there's reverse. There's a little ring on the huh. shaft. Which is the same color as a stick up. shift. And <laughs> oh yeah, and, 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 and see, I don't into reverse. She, she's. Good. I grew up she's in Mexico, good. and my first car was a stick shift. And, and there's a lot of European cars in Mexico. Um, 
and I'm I, I know how to work a shaft. You know she knows how to work a stick. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, folks. Sorry. Hey, I love it. No, I love it. Keep going. Uh, uh, my question in that situation, like I get that that reverse would be frustrated, but some of the positions their cars got in, like they were pushing themselves out of. Like, how did that happen? Like, how did they even get their car into that position? I, I know the first time I tried to reverse. Luckily for me, I was up on a hill, so all I did was put it in neutral and it rolled down, and I was able to get out. And then Brittany was like. Is there you lift it up or you push it down? And then I was like, oh, oh, okay, now it makes sense. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, hashtag fun fact. Uh, <laughs> I once drove across the country from Philadelphia to Phoenix in a uh, pickup truck that had no reverse. Oh, fun. <laughs> Did so, you push off the wall too? I actually always used hills. Uh, I used hills and uh, flat land. When, when you're on flat land, you can kind of use one yeah. leg to kind of get some momentum going. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the strategy. <laughs> All right. So the firefighters weren't just a bunch of like non-prepared people. Everybody's no, screaming no, at the no, TV. No, no, Come no. on, roll number five. Learn to stick shift before you go on the amazing race. Well, they did. They, like you no, they see they were driving. It yeah. just the reverse got them into an issue. Yeah. Okay. So there is different ways. So there are different types of stick shift. And I love the fact that they threw that in. If they did it on purpose, kudos to the producers. <laughs> I love watching people struggle a little bit. All right. Team Extreme is drooling at the beautiful mountains that they're seeing. Mm -hmm. They are thinking about ditching the race and going for a quick ski. They'll probably still have time to catch up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Team Indy raced here for six years. So the, they've driven on those roads. Uh, do you think that was a big advantage for them? Well, it seemed like a lot of the teams, uh, depending on what leg we went to, had kind of visited there before. So I know um, uh, Team Yale went to Morocco, so we're like, oh, no, great. What team knows this country now? And this one specifically was Team Indy. He's raced over there before, so he knew it. And it was, you know, you were trying to keep up with them, but uh, obviously there is rules. They can't just go speeding off, but I just lost them. I couldn't find them. And uh, if not, I would stay right behind on the whole trip. Yeah, okay. Wait, so y'all knew, y'all knew that they knew the area. Yeah, we knew that they, they knew oh, the area. See, so. If I'm that person on the race, I keep that so close to the chest. I'm like, I've never been here before in my life. <laughs> yeah, our, our team, um, not our team, our, our, group our group of was, people, we all got along really well. And we were competitive, but we were competitive as soon as the we got off the plane yeah. and we were ready to race. We raced competitively yeah. and there might not have been helping and you know that part was competitive but we wanted it kind of we all kind of had like a fair race i also feel that because we were all either athletes or some kind of um competitors per se mm -hmm. you know there's there's a sportsmanship aspect there that we all respect each other and respect um what everybody brings to the table and if you're better than me you're just better than me you know mm -hmm. and there's there's it changes the game a little bit we're not so much yeah. into mind games i'll you know, see if that well, I mean, I'm not saying it might. I'm just saying I'm not oversharing. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> I'm just thinking of the way she's saying, like, we're all athletes. We all have sportsmanship. And then I'm thinking, I'm like, what team left is not real athletes and may not show sportsmanship? We'll, well find out. Well, they're a strong team. No, they're a strong team. There's a, reason, there's a reason they're a strong team. You know, they're doing really well in the race because they know the race and they work the race. You know, we'll there's see. all aspects. It's just the majority of the cast, I guess, is, a, you know, different feel but yeah. hey um don't Stay go off tuned. the previews you should know better than to go off the edits Jeff. i know but that i have you here so i'm leading you into saying <laughs> oh i know you're pushing my button <laughs> all right okay. jess jess asks cody to move here he says not unless they have the constitution and the bill of rights cody's yep. big on big big That's on the u.s what she said all right <laughs> Big on the USA. We'll just skip right past that. Let's get to the speed bump. Cedric and Sean had to stack a set of 15 of these boats in numerical order. What do you think about the speed bump? Oh, this was a perfect speed bump. I'll tell you, like, this is the ideal of what a speed bump should be. It's something that doesn't take forever. It tires you out a little bit, and there's still some room for error. So it's not like I'm sitting and eating an ice cream cone. Like, you start, <laughs> you start like, did them numerically, and I think it was just enough to tire them out without completely destroying them. Yeah. I liked it too. I was a I was a fan of it. I thought it was fair. Uh, I didn't mind that it was as physical as it was. I I, I thought it was a good one. I, I love it because no matter how fast you did it, you're going to be tired. So you could do it super fast and be tired. You could do it slowly. You're still going to be tired. So I like that aspect of it. As racers on the race, do you think that was a fair speed bump for them? 
um, I, so. I didn't I see. Think it I didn't inspired. see it until we saw it on the show. I didn't know they did that. But um, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't have to pick up 15 little boats. So right. yeah, <laughs> I mean they probably did it so. I mean easily. Yeah, they it, didn't, it didn't even affect them. Yeah, uh, the sailing yeah. affected them a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, sailing seemed to affect everybody. So let's get to it. The roadblock. You just had to take this the most used uh, sailboat for teaching people how to sail. It only has like three things. Called an optimist. An optimist, sorry, it's three <laughs> optimist dinghy. That there's only three aspects of it that you that three things to touch, right? There's like a boom, there's a rudder, and and what else that you need to touch? There's only like three things to touch. That so, was it. oh, and the the, the Danforth in the middle, it was the uh, or the, no the, 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 the I forgot what it's called. It's a it's wooden thing. stick in the middle. It's like a keel. You so, needed to put it up and down just in case because some parts have reef in it, so. Right, so in my head, in my head, I'm like, all right, this is like handing somebody an iPad. There's only two buttons. How many, how many things could possibly go wrong? Justin, don't the hate wind, it. the wind, uh -huh. no, the wind, mother nature. No, I know oh. you guys have done it. I used to teach small boat sailing in oh, Boy Scout camp, so uh, uh, it's, it's uh, always. So well, he's the, the funny part is, I've never sailed before ever. I know you how to drive. Easy. Well, I, I they told me what to do. I've gone on windsurf boards, so it was kind of the same concept, but I've never sailed. And something that they didn't show is I actually had to do it twice. Um, oh. I forgot the clue. <laughs> oh. He forgot half of the and he half of the oh, clue. So Here's what, if y'all would have gotten eliminated that lead, they totally would have shown that. Yeah. Yeah. You know they would have. Yeah, I'm happy they did. Yeah, he 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 <laughs> sailed he sailed beautifully all the way out to the first buoy. Comes all the way back, Came and back. I said, I "Damn it! Excited. How do I not help him?" And I just looked at him, and he was like so excited. And I just looked at him like this, and he's like, "What did I do wrong?" I'm like, "Did you read your clue, babe?" Did and my clue was clue? in my pocket, and it was soaking wet, <laughs> and oh. I had True to story. open it. And I'm like, "Oh no!" And I had to run back and do it all. All right, so it looked like I was going to give you and Team Extreme the props on this task because you're the only two that made this task look easy. Everybody else seemed to have so many issues with this task, except the two of you guys. I figured you'd learn something similar in lifeguarding or sailing because you're down Yeah, we sailed to our victims. Oh, they, they, I don't know. You got your windboards out there. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. Uh, but you guys seem to do it well. Thank you for being honest and saying that it didn't. Uh, Team Extreme said it took them about 25 to 30 minutes. So even them doing it fast, it was seemed to be a while. How long do you think it took you guys? The first time I went out there, it was like less than five, 10 minutes. And then the second time I went out there, the wind changed on us. And okay. I actually had to paddle the last like 15 yards to the buoy. And then finally I got the wind picked up again and I was able to sail back. So I would say total about like almost the same 30, 45 minutes. Was there a, any rules about paddling or using your arms or swimming like I you know thinking about it now if I was the other team I would have swam over there and just grabbed well, but no but I think you had to use I don't remember you don't know if they swim so oh, like you would have I would have but but you uh no you they didn't say anything about paddling they had the paddles there so I'm guessing if anything happened you could use your paddle. yeah I just was wondering it seemed like because some people you could definitely see them in the water I think Cody was one who pushed his boat and kind of jumped in it and and then it seemed like poor Evan was like way back at the beach She's like trying to paddle friend. and I'm like girl <laughs> get out of the boat and push it forward. And yeah. Cedric is like tall enough to just walk to the place holding the boat. Well, it got deep. It was actually it was going to be over 10 feet by the time we got to the two buoys. It was deep out there. Yeah. But I mean just as far as like getting yeah. off the shore yeah. some of the people I'm like push off. Push the boat a little bit. The, the yeah. cool thing I love about this task is, is, is two things. One, it's very similar to a task that Diana created in our perfect, amazing race that we haven't completed, which we will complete at the end of the season. Um, but it's very similar to a leg that she had in New Zealand about uh, the boat races there. So I'm super excited to see it play out. And it seemed to be very equalizer. And even if you had the skills in this, it, it took there was still a little bit of a learning curve. There's only one or two teams that made it look easy. Everybody else, if you took a time, and thought about it, you kind of figured it out. And I love I love these type of tasks. Um, so let's get through uh, let's get through it. Uh, Extreme and in India, the first two uh, first there, uh, followed closely by Big Brother and Team Yale, Slam Dunk, Ocean Rescue, and Firefighters. Get lost on the way. How long were you guys lost before you got there? Well, we were really lost on the way to get. To the sailing. So I think we were lost. I mean, in, just in general, to get to the sailing, about two hours. Yeah, at least Holy. to get to get to the sailing. So what ended up happening is the the map that we had gave us directions to go to the pit stop. <laughs> oh. So we found the we pit stop, like, Hi, and then we found all the other locations before we found the sailing. 
Every single one of them. Every Everyone. single one of them. I'm mm -hmm. talking where the the marked parking, like everything, the, the wall where you're supposed to get your clue. The we get everything. to the marked parking. Everything. We get to the marked park parking, and Jen's like running through, and we're like, oh my god, they already finished the first one. And then we get to the other one, they're like, oh, there's another team. We couldn't find the sale. We yeah. finally found it, but we knew where everything was. So after that, that's how we moved quickly. Yeah. After that, he was soaking wet, so I jumped in the driver's seat, reversed. That <laughs> problem. And um, and then we knew exactly where everything was. It was it was a small, you know, if you've been to Central Bay, it's 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 small, and we knew where everything was. So that was really quick, and that's why we we were able to kind of catch up on the you know on the second end of it. This is also uh, where we see something that can make or break people on the race. In the middle of the leg, Team Ocean Rescue is bickering back and forth, <laughs> and they are about to break down. But they get, they get, they get it back. They suck it up. Apologies. Move nine it on. Nine years. Nine yeah. years. In nine the same leg. Years. That's hard. That's very hard to do. Is in this uh, to fight and make up in the same leg. Uh, so I can we it. talk about how perfect that one shot was though? Like when <laughs> Brittany's like Brittany's like yelling at Lucas, who just turns his back and the doors just shut in her face. Like, so, so the the story behind that is actually funny because we. We were that was on the way to sailing, so we were very frustrated because we knew how lost we were, and that was before we even made it to Sandra Bay. We stopped in a gas station, asked this really nice man on a moped for directions, and he didn't really speak English, and I my French is really bad, and we were trying to communicate, and I'm like, where are we on the map? Sorry, baby, um, where are we on the map? And he couldn't find it, and he was flustered, and Lucas was getting even more. I was like, upset. he doesn't know. We gotta go. We gotta move. Come and on, I didn't want to take the time to get somebody else to sign a release. So right. I was trying to get as much juice out of this poor old man as I could, and he was getting really frustrated. I was like, let's just get the map. He was kind of rude to the guy, and that's what set me off. Like, I, I don't like treating other people poorly. Yeah. So it, it made me upset, and he walked into the gas station, and I went to follow him, and I kind of stopped where the doors were, and to the point where they were doing kind of like one of, the, it, 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 one of these, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, I don't want to be in there with him anyway, because I'm not, you know? So I took a step back, but not like enough to make it like obvious. <laughs> And it just flows in my face, and it made for really good television. There's not, I believe there's a. And I feel so bad with that guy because we were giving yeah. him the map of Sancho Pay, so we weren't even when in we were telling Sancho him, "Hey, where are we?" He couldn't tell us because no. it was a wrong map. The, so the attendant was like, "Oh, it's over there across the bay," we're and like, we're like, "What? That oh, makes sense God. now." Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's how that unfolded. It seems like Team Firefighter said he they're almost positive they ran into the same old guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, yeah. poor oh, man. Dude. Poor guy. He hates oh. Americans. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was very sweet, and he was assaulted by cameras and stuff. I and, know that's got to be and stressful. And a crying for girl them. and a frustrated yeah. Latino, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, Team Extreme seems to get to the task and do well as usual. Team Indy, 15 minutes, and they don't even move 10 feet from the shore. Uh, comes all the way back with part one before he has to go back out for part two because he does not read the clue. How many teams do you think did that besides Ocean Rescue and um, Indy? I think, I think that was it. Yeah. That was we're the only two dummies. Uh, well, I, I don't. I have to call you out. It's the number one rule in the race: is to read your clue, not just once, twice, slowly. Every word. Don't skip. Don't summarize. Read the clue. It's the most important thing on the race. It only takes a minute, two minutes if you're really slow. It's it's so important. But the, the funny part was that. So I get there. We're running last, and we're like, oh my god. So I I'm gonna do it. I'm, we're gonna catch up. I I read it, but I don't pay attention. And I see both of them, and there's no other teams there besides, you know, Cedric, us, and Evan. Uh, and Evan. So we're like, she's such a trooper. For the record, she so, she's positive all the way, and she just she didn't even skip a beat. Oh, so I, I figured the first, like, yeah. Yeah. So I figured the first teams would be able to get the first buoy, and then if you got here late, you're gonna have to go to the further one. And that's mm -hmm. kind of how I rationalized it. But like you said, you gotta read these clues. And when you're running last, that frustration, you, and you don't think. And I said the same thing last week. I was said I told teams I think what defines how racers do within the race is how they are at the back of the race, back mm -hmm. of the pack. Yeah. Because everyone's going to be there at some point. But how you overcome that, and y'all did, y'all overcame it. You don't um, have to be first. You just can't be last. I'm telling you though, like or, you want to yeah. be that team that like like yeah. the green team that just runs across the board, but like green team <laughs> didn't win. So like I'm not I'm not being shady. No, I'm not trying to be shady, but like 
sorry, Justin. Right. I just I'd rather use us as examples than like current racers. Yeah. Because I, yeah. I still want them to like us. Uh, but like, you just have to make it through, and you really can't get frustrated. And I can use a personal example. When we were in Netherlands, it was us and Shaft Attack at the back of the pack. One of us is going to be eliminated. They got flustered, took a wrong tram. We didn't, yes. and we made it through. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Justin. Lo love me, Justin. I'll get over it someday. <laughs> Uh, maybe. Uh, Cody with the double paddle technique. Did you think that was a good thing to go with? He's going with the, I'm going to row with two paddles. That are no, that part. was Indy. That was actually no, Alex. That was a lot of yeah. people. There was a bunch of people. Yeah. But I did it too. I got Cody. I got Evan gets a boom to the mouth, chips and tooth. Um, what a trooper. Can we like really just focus in on this for a second? She got hit so hard that like a fourth of her tooth got chipped off and she was like, whatever, dumps it in the ocean and gets back in the boat. If I would have like, seen that, I would have probably grabbed her clues for her and brought it back because I would have felt <laughs> so bad. I'm hey, telling you. are going to make them think we're big softies, don't you? I know, but we're lifeguards. I mean, anytime you go in the water, yeah. Brittany wants to like, go you, and you save You saw me sitting there saying that I wanted to go save Cedric, man. Like That was... That I was, was two seconds moment. away from telling them, listen, man, center your weight in the boat, get your legs out of the outside of the boat. You know, like that's, it, it, we really want to, like we're, Jen we're said, used we want to, to see other people, people do yeah, well as well. We want to win. But we with our careers well. and everything, we're used to helping people. And that's something kind of different for us too, to try to not help people yeah, throughout the race. So. All right. Well, I, I like it and I appreciate the whole troopiness of it. <laughs> but when I look at Team Yale, I'm like, all right, Team Yale is supposed to be the smart team. If anybody's going to take the smart like tactic, is they're going to sit and they're going to think they're going to go, okay, I need to take an angle. The wind's coming this way. I need to tack, you know, tack, boom, whatever. Like at least like not just jump in and go just like everybody else, but have some sort of a plan once you get in. Yeah, I figured that's the type of team that they would be, and I was really surprised to see that she just jumped in and was like every other team and just uh, takes the 15, 20 minutes to figure it out and. I was just a little surprised. I the thought race gets I expected to you. more from them. No, but they didn't. I figured in Yale they would probably have one or two sailing classes, right? <laughs> I mean, it, it wasn't. To be True. fair, it, it wasn't. It wasn't easy. The wind wasn't perfect. Um, if you don't understand the direction of the wind and 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 have some kind of water kind of uh, you know tactic, it's 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 really hard. Oh, and so she, did, she kept at it. I, yeah, I would have failed miserably at this challenge. I'm just throwing that out there. Like, I would have not known what I was doing. I would have ended up doing, like, the double paddle and just, like, wiggle my ass out there any way I could. Um, but I would, would have not have been graceful. So I did it. Yeah, it seems that Trevor was going with the double paddle method as well. Uh, Joey seemed to – this is the task of all the tasks in the Amazing Race. Uh, Joey got this task and was like, I know how to do this. And – is it me or did Joey seem to do it better than anybody else? Did anyone see, see Joey do this task? We didn't see it. We hadn't made it there yet. We were still an hour behind fighting at We were coming in. He was spot. coming out. He's like, come on, you can do it. There's still teams in there. So that's all we saw of them. I don't know if it was the edit, but it just made it look like he got in and he was like, oh, yeah. I sail to get hot dogs all the time. That's how I get going. <laughs> <laughs> he feels like coming out of me. So I give him, I give him, I give him a lot of uh, grief, but uh, this was his best showing. Good job on you, uh, uh, Tim. Hopes that Phil has to go out on the boat and eliminate Tim Team Yale. Uh, what do you think about Tim Janice with a little shade for Team Yale, which seems to be the <clears throat> nicest team on the race? I don't think that it's shade. I think it's just wanting to play the game. He wants to stay in the game. He didn't say I he... want to win. He said, I hope she gets eliminated. That's like the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> I didn't catch well, that. If, because they're a strong team, and you always yeah. want the stronger teams to be eliminated. It's a fair statement. And they won, remember, you they won the You one should before. think that, Justin. You're all you know, in the game. I would think <laughs> that you'd be the first one to be like, okay with it. But of all the teams to throw shade at, they're like the nicest team out there. They're like, I can't uh, no, see them. No, they're, com they're competitive. They're a competitive They're a very team. competitive team. They're giving them a, a you know – they they have no they're very Everybody calm very they have prepared. no yeah. you know and remember they just won the last leg in Morocco so all you, right you well, want those strong teams to Corey what do you think about the nose ring I hate it okay what do you think about it it seemed to be a, a big thing on Twitter nose ring I was I was shocked I was like it took me like half the episode to be like is she wearing a nose ring like what yeah. is going on and then I was into it I was I was down with it we she would flip it up and down she had the little, the septum ring and it would just go in and out and she I, mean, I think it's it's part of her personality yeah. and I think she maybe was hiding it at first because she didn't think the producers want it and she asked them and they said whatever you want and so she she felt comfortable enough to be herself and I think that's cool. 
Well, I was I just, I was concerned that I had missed it for three episodes. That was my only thing. Like, I have to no. go back and watch another one and be like, have I just been that oblivious? I'm looking yeah. in the chat room. I think that's a little shade I like. Um, Team Extreme says the edit may make them look nice, but they don't play nice. Oh, dum dum dum. Ooh, what I she, like to see, okay, what like she, to see what, what's what Jen up. means by this, because I, I, I know Jen really well, and I know what she means by this is that <laughs> they're very competitive, and they were very much in their own race. Yeah. They didn't socialize um, over the top like we did, maybe too much, because they didn't want it to um, keep them from playing their race and feeling committed to helping some other yeah. teams. They kept and then, themselves, and then keep and then affecting them. They were very competitive team. They did their own race. If you asked them for help, they weren't going to help you. Um, and that and they weren't rude about it at all. Um, they were just, they played smart about that way. They were very, not cutthroat, but they were very straightened by the book, you know? And, and I, think they can, people I, would say, I think they can pull that off though. Like, I think if you're one of these teams that consistently is at the top, you don't have to help. Absolutely. I think, I think if you're like one of the ones that like me that bounces up and down, like, I need to give a little help, so I'm uh, taking a little help later. <laughs> we were the same way. We were trying to give a little, maybe we get a little bit, so it's just the way it was, but. Yeah. We at this point we we're can, still we'll take trying. It where to, we can get it. We were trying to survive, so. Yeah, I said last week they reminded me of Bernie and Ashley, and and the way you guys described them is, is exactly how Bernie and Ashley raced against us. So I get it. All right, yeah, so I, what, I don't think we took offense to it. I think no. it was just their style. You know. I need to talk about this. It seemed like Sean was watching Cedric. Cedric was having such a hard time. You wanted to jump in and save him. I was like, I, mm -hmm. I go save him. And then Sean is sitting there like, man, he never going to get this. <laughs> <laughs> he never going to do it. Uh -uh, he's, I, he sucks. Ain't going to happen. Like, Sean, was <laughs> was he really just that negative? Because you seem to be more positive about his partner. Okay, so he's sitting there, and they had a hell of Because they got lost, too. They had a speed bump. And then they have these tiny little boats to contend with. And he's looking at his partner and he's seeing him fall in the water, not being able to stay in the boat. Obviously, he's at a point where, you know, he's just like, well, this isn't made for us. Like, look at our size. And it's understandable. And I was like, well, I feel bad. I want to make you feel good. Like, I'm going to tell you, hey, it's possible. Anything's possible. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to cheer him up at that point because what are you going to do? I don't know this guy. He's a big NBA player and I'm making small talk. What else am I going to say? You know, I'm going to be... Like, you know, that's just who I am. I have I, verbal diarrhea. I, I, I loved it. I mean, that's it, what you were doing with him is exactly what Tyler and I did multiple times with other teams on the race. So I really enjoyed seeing that moment. And I'm exactly like you. You've got to stay positive. You've got to keep cheering on your teammate and you got to do what you can. So, yeah. Well, it seemed like at this point, <clears throat> Lucas was using his water skills to make up some time. They got there pretty late, and they skipped a couple teams. Uh, firefighters seem to get caught in the Bermuda Triangle, have no clue what the hell is going on. They're just dangled up in a bunch of boats for like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, this is a great task. I loved watching that all the teams struggle. About time they throw in really hard tasks. Like I, I, I didn't feel the tasks were as hard leading up to this, but this one said, ha-ha, mm -hmm. you're going to learn today, bro. All right. Does anybody else have anything else to say about our boating task? I'm good. All right. Our detour. Bread or thread? Now, this is a little different for me. In bread, teams had to make like a bunch of 50 baguettes from 30 pounds of dough, shape it up. In thread, you had to make some sandals. It seemed pretty straightforward. It didn't seem like it said make sandals. That's like two or go make 50 of these. Uh, it just seemed pretty straightforward to me in thread. Uh, thought process behind picking one of these? James, Earl, which one would you have gone with? We probably would have done a uh, thread because I feel like the sand, like in the moment, I would be like, like you said, it's just one pair of sandals or two pair of sandals, whatever they had to do. Um, but I like having the example. I feel like an example of a shoe is a little bit easier than an example of like a bad jet. So that's what we would have done. Um, <laughs> uh, Corey? Yeah, I agree. I mean, we we had an opportunity to make bread when we were in Armenia, and we passed on it. So I think <laughs> we would have done the same thing uh, here, went straight to the sandals, because, yeah, I agree. It seems like it would have been easier to look at that uh, versus the bread. All right, Ocean Rescue, what was the uh, what was the process behind making the decision? So the, the little research that I was able to do watching The Amazing Race, anything that has to do with restaurants are crazy. Either you're, you're getting orders, you're doing this. So anything that has to do with food, I was always trying to stay away from, which was a bad decision in Morocco. But anything that has to be building, I'm really good at. So if I have to build a sandal, I figured just like, you know, you'll see later on with the trebuchet, I was just like, all right, let's, I got this. I can build stuff. So let's go straight for the sandals. 
Yeah, you crushed that trebuchet. We definitely got to get to that. Uh, so Team Andy, uh, Connor hates anything that he's not good at, which seems to be most of the things on the race. Oh, that's rude. Wow. <laughs> no, no, he seems to be hating everything. He gets to uh, he gets to other things later where I'm going to give him props for making some great plays at something I've never played before. I've never played. All right, but he's he hates anything he's not good at, and that's just something that on the race you can't just say, eh, 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 eh. that's not going to help you on the race. So he needs to be a better partner. Somebody's right. going to call. Fair point, poor execution. I'll give you I always have poor execution. That's my rhyme. Right? All right, Team Big Brother, Cody doesn't know what a baguette is. Surprised? Again, if you had, like, I'm pretty sure, what was it, the croquet? I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure on TV, on national TV, I was like, we're going to go play some croquettes. So, like, <laughs> I can get, like, when you're reading stuff in a foreign country that you're not used to, it gets confusing. I just think, hey, it doesn't say America. In America, that's a roll. <clears throat> Call it a roll. I know what it is. Breadstick. I love that team. I'm just throwing that out there. Like, I think they are. I think they are very charming and funny people. They are actually so much better and nicer uh, uh, and more likable than I expect. But I guess we'll see what happens in the next couple episodes. Because this is when the things that everybody's waiting for are is going to happen. Oh, we'll see. Maybe it's just the edit. Yeah, that right. is awesome. Let's talk about Cody. Oh, I was reading. I was reading. He's I was reading, reading what Jen was saying. Read your clues, please. All right. In, in, tra <laughs> in, in Tread, Team Extreme was uh, having some trouble with the task, but they seemed to get it done. Well strung. Trevor was obsessed with Martha Stewart, so he thinks that that should help with uh, actually making something. Uh, Can I say that I loved that little bit of them? Because still, we're in episode four, and I felt like I did not know who Trevor and Chris were. Like, I just did because they have not. They've been so underplayed that this episode and the next one that we got to know a little bit about them, which I loved. Which they're amazing. They're great. Like there's, they're there's, funny. there is absolutely no other word but amazing and fabulous. Yeah. That's they're just they're funny. They have huge personalities and they don't show that unfortunately. One word to describe Joey: sweaty, because he seems to sweat a lot because <laughs> of all the liquids he drinks during training. So he says he has to get them out. So he's always sweaty. Uh, just throw it out. Team Ocean Rescue is uh, is hanging in uh, uh, with Tread. Team Slam Dunk and Team Firefighters going back and forth with the puns. Is this something we're going to see until Team Firefighters is out of this episode? It's going to be pun, 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 pun. Uh, Eli, I guess you guys like it because you had you had a puns, a lot of puns on your season. Yeah, a lot of puns. I liked Team it. How many times can you say puns? Justin? I don't know. I like the word puns. <laughs> He's loving it. <laughs> <laughs> Team Slam Dunk gets lost on the way to the head to head. Uh, poor guys. And just as, as soon as they seem to get a, a little bit of an oomph, they seem to fall behind. Um, and back at the baguettes, uh, what did you think about the baguettes? Do you think that was a good task overall, balanced, uh, detour wise? Baguettes only It looks balanced. I mean, it kind of did look balanced. Um, yeah. So I, I I do hate it when one road or one detour is significantly easier than the other, um, and this one was about the same. It wasn't the most exciting detours ever, but like at least they're balanced. That's what I was just about to say. It wasn't the be most fun things to watch, but um, it was balanced. I really appreciated that. And if you had certain skills, then you can get certain things done faster than others. Um, so that was a quick and easy bread detour. Like I said, there's, there's not much to talk about because it wasn't really fun to things to watch there. So let's get to the fun part, shall we? The head-to-head. -head, it's, oh, I was so excited that they were going to do it right. They had a decent game, which I appreciated at least the, that anybody can win. They had the head-to-head -head in the second one so they can make up for it, but they put it at the freaking pit stop again. Why? Why Why did you – I? As much as I hated the last one, I was fine with it this time. I was fine but with this one, too. I didn't mind that it was right at the end. I was fine. I was like, this is fair. The longer you get to play, maybe you can get a little bit better. So maybe you do have a slight advantage. If you got there earlier and you lose seven times in a row, like Evan and Henry did the first time, I was fine with it this time. I thought, perfect, leave it. See, and that's I felt the same way about this one. The, I think the reason why I didn't like the first head-to-head -head is it seemed more like just a brute force. And that's good. Nothing wrong with brute force. Well, I did. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. balanced, though. But, like, I don't know. I, I have a bias myself because, like, if my mom's doing it, a 53-year-old woman going to be facing, like, Trevor or Chris from Wellstrun, like, 
that just I'm like, oh, that that part just frustrates me. That's funny. Um, Team Extreme so, thinks the fries was better. I disagree. really, I okay. disagree. I mean, she was there, but I'm watching. Uh, I mean, if I was doing the race, I would have loved to do the fries because. Tyler and I would have beaten anybody on our season except for maybe Brody and Kurt. So, like, I get it. If I were there, I would have loved it too. But watching it, it's, it's not. It's not fun. Yeah, head to heads aren't fun in general. Oh, I can't imagine. I'm so glad. Like, I didn't have to do them because they seem miserable. Oh, especially, <laughs> especially for uh, two teams. Uh, two teams are pretty. Uh, two specific teams. What are you we're pretty about? miserable this episode. Uh, Team Extremes got there first. They're like. Ooh, ooh, Oh, head to head. We got to wait. Team Indy comes in and Connor, who's not natural because he's I've never played this game before. Pow. Beautiful shot wins five thousand dollars each for them by winning one head to head. I don't like it at the mat. I like what Diana said last week, that there needs to be something in between. And it needs to be that point of error that you can make up. If it's, hey, drive five miles, drive three miles, run one mile, something that some team can get lost, another team can have some sort of a little bit more drama. And, I mean, here's another interesting thing. Let's say you do it at the beginning of the of the, the ledge. So, like, the order that comes in, that's the order that's going to be doing it to go out um, to try to give some change up. I don't know. I just – I did. I get it, especially for it to be an elimination. The head-to-head -head for an elimination just seems just anywhere brutal. else besides the mat. I, I don't care if they do it as soon as you get off the planes when you get to that country. Before you get to your car, you have to do the head-to-head, -head, and that's how the, you get like released into your car. So at least there's like a a 15 minute window, a half hour window, however long it takes between every team, and every team's broken up. And now let's see who can make up some time. I don't know. What did you guys think about the head-to-head -head at the mat, Ocean Rescue? Well, we knew any? once, well, when we hit the first head to head in Belgium, um, we were like, okay, this has got to be a non elimination, right? Because there's no way we're going to race French fries and then somebody's going to get kicked off the race for French fries. And they it's kick the, somebody yeah, off. Like, like, like he said. Yeah. And then the they kick somebody head. off and you're like, uh oh, these things are real. They're actually going to kick people off with these head to heads. So um, it was mixed emotions. It worked out for us in the first one. We realized that maybe the fans might not like this if you're a big fan of the show. <clears throat> Um, I've never seen the other Canadian versions where they've done the head-to-heads. This is the first time I ever experienced or saw one in the American version. So, Unfortunately, we experienced it instead of yeah, saw one. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then, as you can see here in San Tropez, we were on the other end of the head-to-head. Yeah. So, and, and for the record, I sit at my lifeguard tower, and these wonderful Canadians that come down every, every winter play um, bocce ball behind my tower every day. Oh, and wow. <laughs> I've never once... Like actually like played it and when this came up I'm like I should have just gone over there and started playing with them. Like had I known, geez, they're gonna hate me when they watch the show. And I've been trying to convince her I wanna build no. one of those in the backyard. Absolutely not. But no way, I will not have it. I like it. Never want to play that game again in my life. I think you should do it. It's a memory that you should have. <laughs> uh, all right. Team Extreme gets there. They lose to Team Indy. So Team Indy takes the win. Is this the f is five teams, five legs, five different winners, right? Yep. Yeah. That's pretty balanced. Yeah. A pretty balanced season. It doesn't really – I don't know. You would say that, Justin, it's with the numbers – Tell me something different. I'm just throwing that out there. I know we'll talk about it, that in a bit. It didn't I like feel it. like that while we were racing. <laughs> and it, the, the numbers don't show that. Well, the numbers, don't they show like a pretty clear top four maybe? All right, we'll get to those in yeah, just we'll a second. We'll get to those. <laughs> team Extreme okay. then goes on to lose the Team Big Brother as Jessica nails a great shot. Team Extreme is getting a little down, but they beat Well Strong. They're Well Strong. Uh Team Extreme, surprise Team Extreme lost twice, or you like to see a little chink in the armor? I mean, I think this is just a a, a learning curve and a and a lucky shot. It's like part of that. And it was like because nothing I don't think any of these people knew how to play bocce ball. Like there may have been one or two that surprised me, but like that's just not something you're regularly gonna be like, I'm a bocce ball expert. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> um well, the so firefighters I did, right? Really? They knew how to play it? Yeah, they, they, they were saying that they, they used to play it with um, their mother, father-in-law or something like that. And they were like, we're having so much fun playing this. And I'm just like... And you'll notice, too, I think some of the teams had a little bit of an advantage when they got to sit there and watch. Like, watch what worked and what didn't work. So like, so like the backspin, yeah. 
There was, I'm sorry about that, James. There was actually a professional petanque players, like world renowned petanque players that were sitting there showing us oh how to play. And they were actually, you would watch them. So they would do these incredible moves where they would just throw the ball really high in the air and it would land exactly on that ball and it would go flying. So you feel after watching this that you're a professional <laughs> petanque player and you're ready to take this yeah. and you can do it. And Which is probably why it took us so long to win because I was actually doing decent. And so you came off with Yeah, those. and the ground was uneven. There yeah, was like was little right. holes. So, yeah, like you said, there was if we didn't know how to play, there was not much skill. It was a lot of luck. Brittany, I feel like you feel about bocce ball how I feel about French rapping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and when we went, when I knew we were going to France, I'm like, oh my God, babe, I can't rap in French. I'm, I will have, I, I, that's the first thing that came to mind, I swear. I was like, I, I will have just I, go crazy. No, I can't. <laughs> so well strong seems to lose two in a row before beating team ocean rescue who goes on to lose three in a row and then it's them and team slam dunk in the finals how do you guys feel intimidation going up against huge monsters of men like hey, that tell them how i catch tell them what my my way of catching so her way of doing. catching is closing her eyes and grabbing the ball and hopefully it lands somewhere there. So no she, aim, no nothing, so like no skill. That's why I was a swimmer. I was, I was worried. I know this wasn't basketball, but I was worried that their hand-eye coordination with playing with you know basketballs yeah. was going to give them an advantage. And uh, we actually had to wait about like an hour and 15 minutes for them to show up. Mm -hmm. So wow. the sitting and waiting and the sitting and waiting and the sitting and waiting, just and we weren't, weren't allowed to practice. So right. it basically <laughs> made no difference if – how we long were you there overall from the first minute you got there to the time you left? I got two hours maybe? Two, two, two and a half hours? Yeah, so if I didn't cry in the first hour, by the second one I was bawling. <laughs> and you could that see. be so demoralizing, like losing yeah. over and over and over. And waiting and waiting and losing and losing and waiting. It just it was suck. It was just bad. Uh, it seemed pretty tough. Team Yell got there, and instead of struggling, they got their first victory real quick. Team Firefighters play a variation of this game that's confirmed in the chat room. So they got there and did a great job, and uh, you guys beat the, the world champion basketball players to stay in the game as Lucas comes up with a clutch shot there. Team Slam Dunk. I swear they are gracious losers. I yeah. am super surprised how much I enjoyed watching them. I am so happy that they're part of the Tar family. Uh, as as ex-athletes, uh, especially at their caliber, you can yeah. expect a different type of person. Yeah. yeah. I, I was so pleased. And we felt bad eliminating them. I know you're not supposed to because we were going to get eliminated. <laughs> but bad, I know they were doing their, their race for charity and yeah, for the hurricane sure. relief. And right before and we Houston. actually left, we just experienced a her big hurricane that came through us or here down by the keys so we had yeah we had a kind of <clears throat> a heart for that that what they were doing and you know going through wow. all that stuff so. god i wish the producers would have put that in there on sean and yeah segment. i was surprised oh. that they didn't yeah i but, was and we were at the mat with them and we kind of we all kind of just like walked we were all just like oh my god i can't believe this just happened we have to kick them out and they said some really nice words they got I no let's kick it. them out we we're nice. You <laughs> but, um, dominated them. You were like, ha! But they said some nice words to us, which encouraged yeah. us for the next leg. They said, hey, we guys, just have fun and, you know. Stop being emotional. Stop being That's emotional, Brittany. And, uh, you know, they, they kind of encouraged us to, like, hey, just let's have fun. So. And they really gave a huge shout out to the crew. And that was a big deal for me. That was like, wow, well, yeah, you're right. The, this, the crew, the audio, you guys have been on it. The camera guys, they're amazing. Oh, you God. Know, they, I they could not do their get, job. Yeah, they, they deserve to get all the, you know. The so a great job. We loved watching. Uh, we loved watching them, and hopefully we'll have them on the show at some point. I haven't been very responsive, but hey, they got millions of followers. I'm say they're busy. Yeah, we'll see. They're not like us. <laughs> We're sitting in the <laughs> All right. I'm oh, sorry, James Zero. Who's getting your seal clap? My seal clap is actually going to Team Yale because I think Evan. Uh, no, yeah, Evan was such a freaking trooper. Like I said, when she just like dumped her tooth in the ocean and was like, I'm tackling through this, like that is just what I dream of. <laughs> like, so Evan, like props, kudos, everything above. All right. Uh, Corey, your LOL moment. My, I mean, I feel horrible saying that I laughed when Evan got hit with the pole, but like, <laughs> I, I don't want to say I laughed at that. I want to say I laughed at her just like doing her confessional at the end of the episode with the big old chip tooth in the front. But I mean, absolutely, like James Earl said, she like didn't even hesitate, didn't even stop, yeah. just powered through the task. So I really wanted to give props to her too. 
I, I want to give props. Uh, the super fan move. Joey didn't have a super fan move, so I can't give it to him. But I was so proud of him and his his moment. I'm actually gonna probably give this. I'm gonna give the super fan move to Team Ocean Rescue. Why? Uh, you just don't suck up to us. Yeah, no, well, no, 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 don't just, do it. Not just because you're here. You have to give it to us on the next leg. <clears throat> no. No, you know, <laughs> I think you guys really deserve it here because you did something that I think is one of the hardest things for a, uh, a couple to do on the race. It's fight and make up on the same leg and continue on. So I Thank think you. that is something that is Appreciate super it. hard to do, especially on the same leg. So I give you guys a super fair move for that because without that, I think that could have been to a, a, a detriment. You guys yeah. would have been in a whole different attitude, uh, especially during a head to head. So I give you the props for that. Diana, do you want to hold on? Danny, you want to put anybody in check? I love this. She's not prepared. She's doing her grad work, so she's she's focused on that. All right, cool. So let's move on to the episode everybody's been waiting for. Dun, 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 dun. We're going on to more France. So this seems to be the first leg where you guys are not waking up and jumping on an airplane. It's a leg you're waking up in the country and we're staying in the country. Which but, was Great that we were last because we got, to, got sleep to sleep in, in bed for a couple more hours. <laughs> <laughs> like a good amount of like, I just I saw the first team left at well, around one. We left around like four. Oh, and that's nice for y'all too because the it's such a bunch point there. So y'all are super duper rusty. Like I said, we were okay with the equalizing. Of no wonder you here. won. You got to sleep in a bed well, while everyone else slept and, outside. And, and because to be fair, then the day before we you know we were able to play around in the pool and water just recharged our batteries. I love it. There you go. So Team Indy is leaving at 1.49 in the morning. Team Ocean Rescue left at about 4.28. So there's a nice gap between them. <laughs> uh, but it didn't matter because uh, you're going to take a two-hour and 40-minute drive, and you're going to wait till 8.30 until it opens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's all the beautiful sunrise in France. So uh, was driving there difficult? Everybody seemed to, didn't seem like there was any issues with anybody getting No, we picked, up, we picked up a map in, in Paris when we had to stay. And uh, when we did the connection to go to Saint Tropez, or the Nice, I'm sorry. And uh, so we had general directions or general idea of how to get somewhere. I think that the one team that had an issue was actually Yale. Yale actually, they left before us and they got there after us. Unless they wow. stopped for breakfast. I mean, maybe. Yeah, they left at 2.52, and you guys left an yeah, hour and a half after them. So yeah. that's pretty interesting. All right, uh, first leg without a flight. Uh, Cody's going to the Lesbo Chateau. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, that might have been an interesting place to visit. I guess it's point to Lesbo Chateau. Uh, Team Extreme takes notes uh, to always improve. I think that's one of the smartest things that people could do on the race. Did you guys seem to take notes and kind of look back and try to learn from them? A hundred percent. I think Jen and Christy were definitely um, two people that we could really admire and kind of just see their strategy and see the way they thought. Even what the, the small amount of time that I worked with Jen in Morocco um, on the roadblock, when we first left, because they got there later on, um, because they got lost, their taxi got lost. Um, when we worked together, you know, I was able to translate and speak in Spanish with the guy, and she just had the right questions to ask. And I was like, huh, like I can speak Spanish, but man, she knows what to ask. And I, I you know, I really try to learn from her and and all that kind of stuff. She's all like, right. So, okay. So, uh, <laughs> my woman crush. The team. <laughs> they said Evan and Team Yale left at two. 30. <laughs> 2 30. Yeah, they got but they said it took them five hours and Jen said they made it there just before it opened. So uh it was but she had a tooth fixed. Yes, they actually after How long was pay, pit stop? the same day. It, oh it was it was long. It was like a day and a half. Okay. Oh, those are the best. Oh, those yeah. are so relaxing. Yeah, it was really nice, <laughs> which is again why we were able to recharge our batteries, I think everybody. And she she um they took her that same day and it was fixed within a couple hours wow so she was all happy and smiled again i was like that's pretty gangster they yeah. fixed it on the same leg yeah team well strong is feeling like all seven dwarfs uh <laughs> <laughs> i think this is uh, they only have these little moments of like here's here's our character here's who we are don't forget who us but at least they're a little memorable moments <laughs> like this <laughs> well he's gotten two of the um the last episode quotes yeah. yeah yeah 
They're good with the quotes. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're sassy. Uh, so, so Team Yale, it's both 22 years old, and they seem to be learning a lot about each other. Um, it seems like Henry is getting a really turned on by how strong that uh, Evan is. And I think, uh, oh, it's, I think it's very cute. He's very He's cute. Nice. They're very sweet, sweet couple. <laughs> and they were friends well before they started dating, so. That's awesome. Uh, one thing I love is that it opens with Lucas talking about he needs to work on his attitude and he knows it. Uh, and I'm sure that you appreciated that, Brittany. Yes, I did. All right. So everything opens at 830. All the teams are even again. It's a foot race. It's really nut. I mean, within seconds of each other, everybody's opening their clue. So it's another equalizer. But it's a good it's a good roadblock, I think. And oh, I, think, I love this roadblock. I think people we think it was people with certain skills seem to uh, definitely fly through this one. We have to build a trebuchet. If you don't know this about me by now, if there's a past life, I was a medieval knight. I know no. this. I had a castle. I had swords, and I dressed in armor. Shut up and leave me alone. <laughs> No, I would have loved this, but to be all honest, Diana would have been so much better at this than I would have. <laughs> <laughs> so, who would have done this and why, uh, James Earl? Um, ideally, I would have done this. I'm just a little bit better with the attention to details. I was going to ask Lucas and Brittany, because some of the roadblocks, you can kind of see what you're going to be doing, so you can kind of cheat and figure out who was going to be yeah. doing this one. Is this one of those ones we could tell or not? Well, when we there was a the large, gate. when we were at the gate, there was a large trebuchet that they were mm -hmm. swinging and a bunch of medieval, uh, not medieval, but the people would, yeah, just up in armor. We, had, we didn't know what they were doing. I, we figured it was building, I guess. But I knew. You That's knew? why I said you, hello. Oh, like, I didn't right know, away, I didn't know. Like, I barely had time to read that clue, and I'm like, you, 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 because I had done like all the really crappy stuff. <laughs> it was going to be boy stuff, stuff, so I was pretty like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Justin, ideally I would have done this one. I just think this one took a little bit more brute force and attention to detail, which I was, I'm better at than my mom, unfortunately. I just found a tidbit before we get to you, Corey. <laughs> Eric from the firefighters said that Evan didn't bring her passport to the dentist and they thought she was being human trafficked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was covered in bruises. By that time, by that time, time in the race, race, and it was warm, so she was wearing shorts. So they thought it was kind of weird that the producers wouldn't leave her out of the room because of you know security reasons. So they thought it was. Oh my god! <laughs> it was a comical little story she told. Yeah, it, it really was one of those that's moments. A, that, that's one of those stories you tell Alex when he goes on Jeopardy. So, <laughs> you know, once, uh, uh, human traffic that he does see. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, because you know how it is. You've got security with you and producers yeah. and stuff whenever you leave. And so oh, they were all male. And You have she a pretty was young girl. woman yeah. with a chipped tooth. They figured they punched her in the face. And or a lot of bruises. And, yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, Brittany, this is where uh, I think the pineapple comes back into play. Because uh, you did – the guy comes over and grabs you, and you said uh, you like to be manhandled. Lucas. Did I? I said that? I didn't think that was me. I heard that. I'm like, I wonder who said that. But it's completely possible. As you can see, I have like, verbal, diarrhea. Verbal, verbal diarrhea I was diagnosed with at a very young age. So I don't. I black out. Half of the things that, that are shown, I really don't even remember that I said that. makes our pineapple look really did, bad. Did I really so say that? So is pineapple your real safe word? No, my best, my best friend, my best friend gave, no, knowing me and understanding me and loving me to death, she told me. She told me you need a safe word and it needs to it be was pineapple. Part of our inside <laughs> joke and then part of our jokes with our friends to yeah. say, "Hey, pineapple, hey guys." Yeah, it was like a way of like reaching out to her, you know, every That's time cool. I was wanting to kill Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> that love from afar. So the firefighters keep their puns going because they're investing in stock. Oh, <laughs> but a bush. Uh, <laughs> I love this task. I think it's a very detailed task, and this is something that's on the race pretty much all, every season. There's that one task that's really build something, really attention to detail. I love this. A lot of little things. Uh, you had something similar on your season, didn't you, Corey? Yeah, with the kites uh, when we were in Bali. Hmm. So, yeah, I, w I was thinking when I saw it, I was like, hopefully – I would have chosen to do this task because that not only did it look fun, but I, I love building things like that. And I think it was a cool task to do. <clears throat> yeah. And that the one little thing makes all the difference. And as we see, when we watch Tim struggle, can't figure out what's going on. It's just one little thing all the time, just these little details. But those are the tasks that make, I think 
good tasks, great tasks, because mm -hmm. it, when you have something like that, that can cause such a, a difference in time from people starting and leaving those tasks. So Cody wants to build houses after the race. Uh, do we think that's the next reality show? HGTV come calling for living Jody? I think he's just turned into being like a model or something. <laughs> I want to know how tall he is in real life because in that one episode, Cedric sure. made a joke and said he was five six. Yeah, yeah, like he's five, about six, my height. Five, yeah, five six, five seven. So, so is he and me? I had no idea. Yeah. It, Sorry, he's... short people. <laughs> I don't care. I just didn't know. I couldn't. It sounds like tell. you do. It sounds <laughs> like you do. It's just, that's just throwing that out there. I, yeah. uh, Cody seemed to do really well in this task uh, as well. He uh, they were the second team out, but the person who got into this task and beasted it what's going on how often do you build trebuchets there uh, well you know we, we do have a safe word that's what i'm talking about it's like a whip <laughs> sorry i'm like making i'm so sorry i'm so bad i love it no i'm <laughs> living for all this i love tinkering with stuff we just bought a house we renovated it i, I renovated our previous apartment my See the shelves behind us this is his handiwork yeah so i mean i constantly do stuff so this was, you know, we I saw it. Uh, all the tools were in a little box. It was in that part of the trebuchet that gets launched with whatever rocks that would be in there. So once I saw everything that was in there, I figured, okay, let's just go step by step from the bottom up. And that's kind of how I worked it. And uh, I did notice that some people were watching it back, grabbed their stuff and put it on the floor, but everything was full of So I'm wondering if people lost some of their, their nails and all these other details stuff that might have been making it more complicated for them. Wow. So I like I like that though. You got in there, you did it. Uh, like I said, Diana would have been so much better. I would have struggled. Attention to detail tasks are not my thing. Um, Christy was the only girl in this task for seven men. It didn't seem to phase her one bit. They got in, they got out third. Oh, yeah. Another freaking strong. She's just show. badass. Yeah, I'm telling you, like I have such a crush on that team. Like I'm no really shade to any of the other teams. I'm like, joining I have you. Such a crush. I'm joining. I'm on the bandwagon. I can't help it. Yeah. But, they, I think they'd be a great representative for, for a team to win the amazing race. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, no offense to anybody else. Uh, Chris and his big muscles don't seem to be helping him because he can't get these pegs out because he rammed them in so hard. How hard would it, would it have been if you put one in wrong? And did you? Oh, yeah, I did put one in wrong, but I was able to kind of hit it from the top to bottom to wiggle it out. It looked like he jammed that in too tight. And if you did, that was – almost game over because you were going to have to use another peg to get it out. And some pegs, you weren't going to be able to go from the other side to hit it out. So I don't even know how he got that one out or if he did, but you didn't want to mess up. You didn't want to put the things in the wrong spot. Oh, man. It seemed like that was a, a, some bad errors you don't want to make with those. Well, Strong hates the sugary sweet stuff, so stop with the cheesy encouragement. <laughs> they said that, but then like 10 minutes later, oh, he was he was also the person to be like, you got this. Good job. I don't know if you noticed that, but I did. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he was playing, though. I don't know if he was he like... Was. Probably. Like, they were just joking. Was. I'm yeah, just giving him hell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like that. I like that. I like to see some, again, little sprinkles of their character since they're in the middle all the time. You don't really get to see yeah. the people in the middle that much. Um, Tim seemed to can't, fig can't figure out what's wrong. Uh, it's killing Joey because he's sitting there staring at it and he can't say anything. Uh how long was that uh, whole task for you, in and out? Less than an hour. No, it wasn't even an hour. No, that much less. Like that's why I said less than minutes? an hour. <laughs> 15, 10 minutes? 10, uh, 10, 15, 30, 30 minutes? 30 minutes, you think? Maybe 30 minutes. 10, 15, 30? It's a, yeah. Yeah. And enough for my elbows to hurt, you know. I was, I was like, did we talk about oh, what was the talking about? about? Like, what was I the mean, <laughs> it looks cool. I was I was able to get one where I was able to actually see him because some of the other teams were they couldn't even look over to see their teammates. I, I had no idea she was in that, and I finished. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you in that? Well, thing? I wasn't and in I it for that long, to be fair. <laughs> 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 well, I really liked it. I liked the fact that you guys had to sit there in the stocks. I appreciated that aspect, and I'm sure you did too. Uh, very detailed <laughs> task. It's a great one. <laughs> no. uh, I think it's funny that the race car drivers can't uh, figure out that the wheel nuts are on there. Like That's the thing that stumps him. That the well, He's a driver. He's not in the pit stop, so yeah. maybe that's the reason why – you know, Connor didn't do so good on that one. Poor Connor finishes last, can't seem to get out of there. So I had 
I've yeah. had so many questions about like the pieces. Were they all just in that box? Like I'm just yeah. so confused as how people didn't know they had pieces still not used. Mm -hmm. So the box had the hammer, that makeshift hammer, four different size nails, uh, the chain, the rope, everything was in that box. But some people, like I said, grabbed stuff and took just it out got it. and you couldn't do that. If you did that, you were going to lose your things. As soon as right. I saw the floor and the sand and the rocks, I'm like, oh, I don't know, I'm going to keep everything in that little box and work my way out of it. Yeah. Smart. All right. So. Okay. No, I, no, I'm done. I was just saying, making smart decisions and that gets you to win. Finally. <laughs> Only took us how many legs. Definitely <laughs> takes you every time. Uh, this leg's detour, a full of bull or colorful? Full of bull seemed pretty straightforward. There's going to be 100 bulls. You're going to run around. You're trying to find flags. You're in a big arena. Seems like nothing to think about, but if you just put your head down and run, uh, straightforward. Whereas uh, colorful seemed a little, a little more... I guess detailed, a little more oriented. Uh, which one we, would you have gone for, Mr. Uh, Corey Koo? I We would have hands down went to the Bulls. I mean, Tyler and I knew running was a strong point of, of our team and our, our relationship. So we would have gladly went and ran all around that Coliseum or, or whatever it was to arena. find those Bulls. Yeah, Arena. Super <laughs> happy. Super happy that they do not kill the bulls in this place, this part of the country. They just kind of smack them on his forehead and take something. So I appreciate that, that they don't needlessly kill bulls in this part of the world. Uh, James Earl, I, I had a feeling you guys might go the other way. You know that. Like, and I think I don't know if it would have been a mistake or not, just because we only saw one team do the puzzle. But like, anytime I saw a puzzle, I was doing it. Just like I can crush a puzzle. Like, I can crush a puzzle. So I would have gone for that. I wish we could have seen some other teams do it to have a little bit more gauge about, like, what it actually took and how long it took and that type of things. But I don't know. Maybe Mom and I would have chose puzzle and gotten eliminated because of it. But puzzle is what we would have gone. I think you guys would have rocked the puzzle. You guys destroyed the puzzle during our season. And yeah, I, think, I think you guys would have rocked this puzzle pretty good. Um uh, Keyshawn Wright, I see you in the chat room. Ain't nobody, nobody's hating. I call it like I see it. So stop crying. Wham. Um, Fully noted. Thanks for the. Uh, hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're here on the D side. This is where Jess starts throwing shade. I can't believe that they're getting beat by the lifeguards. Well, believe it. Oh, it's so a fair statement. It's a fair statement. But right? no, no, no. Like this race to be anybody's game. Like, like yeah. I said, and I have people say that about like me and mom at times during the race. And like, you can be beat by anybody. So like, don't get cocky. That's true. Well, I think it's it's a you know it's one of those things where we put ourselves in the bottom for the most the beginning of the race. So I think we were, ourselves were very surprised that we were in the spot where we are and very grateful. So. I appreciate. I appreciate good teams. I appreciate people who call it like I see it. But what uh, Cody doesn't understand, uh, let's see, he bases too many things on hunches. He's he's had the same problem in the Big Brother house. Doesn't listen to Jessica. Bases two things on hunches where she's more the thought out. She he said he was going to do it. If you watch some of the extra footage, he goes through a couple hunches and they get into a little bit of an argument. Do you think that could possibly be the detriment for Team Big Brother? Cody uh, doing this, um, I'm going to go on my hunch and not listen to Jessica again. Well, anytime they say something like this, it always makes me a little nervous of like foreshadowing because the, the race loves to foreshadow. They love it. Um, so it always makes me tilt my head to the side a little bit when I hear something like that. Mm. I have has an interesting, especially with the next week's edit with the double U-turn coming up. So this is going to be interesting. Also noted, Jess said she can't drive. Like, just she doesn't know how to do a stitch shift? No, I think she didn't have her driver's license. Mm -hmm. Oh. Like, she legit couldn't drive. It's like, like, it wasn't she couldn't drive option. at all. No, it wasn't an option. I don't know if Which I didn't know. Her. I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know if you had to have a license or not. We, I think as long as one person. Yeah, so that's why, that's what that was. It wasn't that something in the race didn't allow her. She just never yeah. started with the license, so she couldn't mm -hmm. drive anywhere. That's oh. interesting. Fun fact. <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, so I like the bullfighting here. They don't kill people. Team Extreme. Jen doesn't want to follow here. So this is one thing that separates people that we see every season when there's leaders and there's followers. Where uh, you got the lifeguards and you got Team Extreme in the same arena. The lifeguards seem to be kind of leading the way. Uh, Team Ocean Rescue guys leading the way. And they seem to be kind of following you around. They kind of pause and say, you know what? Let's go our own way. Um, 
I love these moments that they, they kind of define what type of race uh, you guys have run. Do you guys have any sort of mindset with that? Or it's like, we're, if we're in the middle of the pack, we'll follow. If we're in the lead, did you guys have any mindset uh, going in? Uh, Ocean Rescue, sorry. Yeah, he's asking. Oh, um, <laughs> so at this point of the game, I mean, because we've been so far back in the race, we see, you know, follow, like, had no choice but to follow. like Phil, Phil said in the thing, you want to just follow the ponytails. And we're like, yeah, let's just follow the ponytails and we'll figure out how to get there. Who cares if we don't get a prize? Which, we just want to keep going on the race. Which is interesting because in Iceland, we actually came out at one point we were first. We were on the first flight and we got to the cars first and I got stuck behind the stupid bruma. What is that called in English? Uh, the, the things yeah. to get out of the airport. Uh -huh. It got stuck on us. So we got stuck and all the teams passed us. We had, and we had two teams. We had Yale and, and Christiane. At one point we were in front and that's why we got horribly lost. And then we were leading the way and we got lost. So we yeah. said, hey, you know what? Maybe on this one we'll just follow. But we noticed that Jen and Christy <laughs> got off to go talk to somebody at the gas station. And we were at this point, we were doing well at that point of that leg, mm -hmm. following the directions. And we're like, let's just go a little the, further and see what happens. The directions were pretty straightforward on this specific leg for driving. If you followed each um, each part of the directions, it would tell you what sign to follow as you're going into those roundabouts. And it really kind of gave you a play-by-play. -play. Along with the map, You know, I kind of basically just put two and two together to make sure I was going the right way. And it was much simpler than other legs, in my opinion. All right, so we're looking at Team Ocean Rescue, and they can't seem to make, uh, agree on what the best method is for this. It takes them a little while as they argue through it. It seems like Team Extreme uh, gives them a chance to pass them up. Uh, Team Yale says that this task is a uh, lower variance and just more straightforward, and that's why we're picking it. And that's the analytical team that I was expecting to see throwing in the lower variance references. <laughs> I just like when they throw in the moments that uh, they kind of stereotype them into, like, oh, they're a smart team, so let's throw in when they use some smarter words. It's just so <laughs> uh, Big Brother gets lost on the way, and this seemed to have a, a problem uh, for them. Some navigation is going to be an issue, and this is where Team Indy makes up a lot of uh, ground with navigation. And well strong. I don't know what the hell happened with them. They seem to get really, really lost. Um, I unfortunately think they're slipping, and I, I hate it because we're just getting to know them right now. But I think they are they are slowly cracking as time goes on. Yeah, they don't seem to be getting stronger. That's for sure. Uh, so Team Indy's doing well. Uh, then we, let's go over to the colorful. The, <laughs> there's only uh, Team Chomp seem to be the only ones to do this task, uh, the Van Gogh task, and they seem to figure out the, the actual puzzle. But they didn't hit the little potato chip clip thing up top to open it. Well, no, I think what it was is it's the thing that slowly slid up more and more depending on how many pieces you got. That's what I think the thing was doing. Mm. I have no idea. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah we, there's a reason we didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. A clear reason. James, I was just excited about that one. Oh, no, I'm telling you, like, I, my childhood was just a lot of puzzles. Like, like I'm t so, like, anytime I saw I it. was harder that, to find, too. Yeah. I think it was a little bit harder to find. Oh, so that's why people didn't go to choose that one as well. It, okay, but it seemed to me that it was pretty straightforward. They figured it out, but again, you never know what's going to happen. Um, so the Celebrity Big Brothers have been announced. We'll get to that as soon as we're done with this. So don't worry about. Uh, so don't worry about any of that. Uh, those of you who want to get it, we'll get to it in a second. We'll get to in a second. We're almost there. All right. So Tim asks if he could uh, cut off the ear of the Van Gogh guy sitting there. <laughs> it seemed like he was serious. I don't know if it was in trying to be a he, to he totally wanted to. <laughs> uh, they figure out the puzzle, get stumped on how to open it. I don't know how long they were there, but in the extra footage, it seemed like they were there for quite some time. And let's get to where we're going. The big win. Team Ocean Rescue finally gets the win. They're going to win a trip to Bali, which seems like the perfect honeymoon destination. Get to Corey, Bali. how was Bali? It was, uh, well, I mean. Oh, no, don't ruin this moment no, for me. I mean, I've always wanted to go to Bali, but, I mean, we were, yeah, we were there yeah, right for mean. two days, and we weren't yeah. even on the touristy side of the island. So yeah. we slept on a boat. And it yeah. rocked all night sounds long. Like, sounds oh. like fun to me. But I still oh. say, I still say it was like Bali was absolutely one of my favorite places we went mm -hmm. to, and and I do want to go back because it was just beach and water and yeah. sun, and that's 
me and that's my type of vacation. Yeah. So I was excited when I saw you guys got that. Can we do oh, a, we? Can we do a, No, I, I love how Brittany tried to say that. She was like, you're talking about rocking on that line and Brittany was like, oh, I love that. I meant being on a the boat. boat. Yes, the because boat. at this point, apparently I've made myself into be this like crazy person by my verbal diarrhea. But truthfully, I love boats, you know? So yeah. I'm, I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm just giving bring, you a hard time. I know you are and that's why I love you. As I say, bring lots of sunscreen. Our entire cast got sunburnt beyond We boat. don't wear sunscreen. <laughs> We're ocean lifeguards. You I don't either. Say, I tan so that's easy. a good Latina skin. Soy mexicana, por favor. Well, I thought the same about me, and I was yeah. red one of the first yeah. times ever in my life. So, so they get the private beach, they get the massage, they get the dinner, and then boom, gets the proposal. Everybody's crying. It's a beautiful moment. I, I couldn't have been more perfect. And initially said you weren't going to do it during your first win, but I guess was it because it was one of the most Beautiful it did take us. Well, it did take I, us a I while was, to get the first win. So maybe that's. What I was doing. never gonna force like some people might under misunderstand it. I was never gonna force an engagement on the race. If I at any point lost in a really bad point, which we've been doing up to this <laughs> point, I was never gonna force an engagement. Yeah. So if it didn't feel right, I was gonna take that ring home with me, and I would have done it somewhere else, maybe on sequestered or somewhere other, you know, other place that I had in mind. But it just. We got to France. We did this whole leg. I heard that trip that we won to Bali, and it was like, oh, my gosh. And if you've seen the, the actual footage on YouTube, some people thought it might have been set up for us. And you can see how we were going to turn off and let Jen and Chrissy actually win that leg. And uh, we just made the right decision. It just all worked out perfectly. Yeah, and it was It was. I'm really happy I did it there. It yeah. Really yeah, people pretty subconsciously knew it was coming. Because I don't know if you noticed when she won. She was like, we won. Oh, my gosh, we won. <laughs> No, I'm Mexican and I speak a lot with my hands. Oh, yeah. just, if you don't need to every single hand. edit of me, I'm like this, you know? know. So it was just perfect because it was like the left hand only in stream. <laughs> Subconsciously. That's great. Uh, we saw Team Extreme. Jen was actually getting emotional before the proposal, it seemed to cry. Did you guys seem to bond with uh, yes. Team Extreme? Is that why the, it was so yeah, emotional? They're they're a hundred percent just amazing women and we really bonded with them throughout the whole leg and they were very competitive They yeah. would help you if it didn't affect them But if not they wouldn't like they're they're they were smart about it And I respect them a hundred percent for the way they game, they played the game and there's just a love there And I think she anticipated it before me No, she saw her face like her <laughs> face her face is my second most favorite thing of the episode so like, when she was like <gasps> And then she was like trying not to ruin it because she saw she got inside and then she's like, oh crap. I know. She, she, she asked her, she's like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, uh oh. I would hate to uh, bring you guys through um, what a woman feels when she's getting proposed to because I know, you know, a lot of people don't really care about that. But I saw everything else around me from Dean, the sound guy, crying to, you know, oh. Jen's reaction and just this the light was like shining like you know everything was perfect and i didn't get to really pay attention to like what mattered most to me was what he was going to say which he never talks about his feelings so i was i'm always like badgering him you know so and it was so the whole great. idea and i know i've been getting some of this on you know on yeah. on social media regarding why would i do such a big engagement and you know on national television well it's the opposite of what he is what i am is i'm not very <laughs> public i don't do a lot of public affection yeah. so i figured what better way um, to do it to make it a big huge gesture. Yeah, step out of your comfort zone. Exactly. Oh, I thought it was beautiful. I like, love every that. bit of it. So did I. <laughs> Stop it! You're gonna make me cry. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry yeah. about anybody else. This is I your, know. your no. world. I this know. is no, your it's, world. It's, People, it, it are, was, they, who cares? It's your bubble. Yeah, yes, no, it was exactly. absolutely beautiful. And being able to relive it, I have yet to be able to watch it without crying. And just being able to listen to what he says and the feeling there and everything is just, you know. One thing Phil told me that I'll never forget. He goes, because um, I asked for pictures along the race, like, oh, can you text, mm -hmm. send me those? Because you know how they take pictures. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you're going to have the most expensive travel <laughs> vacation video ever. Yeah. Just, you have this video. What do you need this one picture for? You have video cameras from 20 people mm -hmm. filming you. Like, yeah. So he, I, you just remember that moment. Like, it's great. And, and yeah. it's cool that you guys are part of history along the Amazing Race. So congratulations. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. I proposed on a fake Amazing Race. <laughs> so you guys did it on a real race. So. And I, one small piece of information. She actually carried the ring the whole entire time. The whole time. So she was and in charge of our fanny pack. 
uh, that had all our important documents and money and uh -huh. clues. And what I did was I hid it in a small little blue uh, bag that was. It's a it's a pocket mask. It's a micro shield for yeah. CPR, and it's something that I would never look into. I wouldn't open it because I would assume that's what it was. And it was it's so normal to me to carry one wherever we go that I I just wouldn't even have thought twice. And about I asked it. I asked that just a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if it was last week or the week before, but I was like, how the hell did he hide this for like weeks? Because like you're always set together. So I was like, how did he hide this? But good so, for and you. I put, and I put that inside the little case that I had for the headphones because I figured if I ever got through security and it beeped they would actually look at the headphones and be like, oh, okay, it's just headphones. So, um, you know, we weren't allowed to take electronics, but the headphones aren't anything that can do anything for the trip, so. And it was an easy way to, you know, Carry consolidate it. it and Which I left in France. I left the headphones over there, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, at least, well, at least, you, at least I got the ring, right? You got the wife, you got the uh, wife, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Team Firefighters did a great job. Team Yale up at the top. Well, strong. Uh, Team Big Brother seems to be falling towards the bottom, getting lost there. Well, strong way in the back, but uh, even further than them is Team Chomp. Um, Tim is not sure if I'll ever be able to get let it go. Tim, no, you won't. Sorry. No, you really won't. You, I, I promise you, like, for all the people that have been eliminated this season so far or in the future episodes, like, your elimination episode is going to make your stomach turn, and you're not going to be able to watch it many times <laughs> after that. Like, I can't watch my elimination episode. I just can't. And then Phil, I cannot believe Phil throws it. It's a tough pill to swallow in it. Oh, Phil, the puns while they're going out. And Joey, we aren't wieners today. He tries. He tries to. Oh, poor guys. I, they weren't ready for the race. Uh, I, I appreciated the fact that it seemed like Tim was really passionate about it. But they, they weren't. I don't think they ever had a chance, at, 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 but they got to at least run the race, so good for them. Um, James Zero, seal clap. Oh, God, you don't even have to ask what my seal clap is going to be. My seal clap is Ocean Rescue for the proposal. That was so freaking beautiful and so <laughs> exciting and just everything. James Zero, LOL moment. <laughs> or Corey. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Corey. I, Eric and Daniel made both made the same pun separately about the stock exchange and i didn't know if they even heard each other do it but literally they both made the same bad stock exchange pun and i rolled my eyes the first time and then i laughed really hard when the second one did it so i i will give them that and you know tyler and i loved puns when we were on the show yes. so i'm definitely giving it to the the firefighters for this week Oh, they were very punny. All right, here we go. Uh, I am actually going to give mine to uh, Team Extreme for not being followers, for deciding to be leaders and making sure that they are vocal about it, that we're going to choose our own path. I thought that was always something that you should do on the race. Uh, why follow when you can lead? Uh, so I think that's something that uh, I, I always try to – uh, be a part of instead of running with the pack i make the pack follow me so that was kind of always the the way i thought it so i'm giving them the um super fan move but who cares because the episode belongs to team ocean rescue the perfect from worst to first your proof that i mean you can literally turn it around in one episode and that's when i think we learned that we learned how crazy the race is that it really doesn't matter what skills or what you have into it that it just Everything aligns, and it's really anybody's game. It's insane how much that it's true. Could win? Does winning one leg give you the confidence to say that we can win this all? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our our mindsets completely changed after this. From year. from feeling like, oh my god, this is what what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? Like, get it together. That we have a chance to actually do well, and not like, yeah. oh no, we're gonna get kicked off on the next night. We're gonna and, get kicked off. And on all the floor. frustrations, you know, it, all the frustrations that everything else gives you, it, it pretty much diminishes all the skills that you actually have. I mean, we've got a lot of skills between the both of us, and there's a lot of things that we 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 are really good at. But if we're always so frustrated and we can't, you know, perform, then what's the point, you know? Absolutely. All right. It seems like another uh, a very cool place that I'd love to visit coming up next, going to Prague in the Czech Republic. It looks like this is what the episodes that everybody's been waiting for. Uh, Team Big Brother is going to show their Big Brother ways. Maybe we'll find out. It Could it be editing? It looks like Team Big Brother screws over Team In the End, Team Ocean Rescue by lying to them. There's a double U-turn ahead, so it's pretty bad time to screw over two teams. 
Uh, it looks like there's a beer de detour where you drink it or bathe in it, possibly, uh, in the bonus footage here. Uh, Cody also says there's a clear four top teams, Big Brother, Indy, Extreme, and Yale. So let's talk about some of these things. What do you think, James Zero? So it's crazy that there's been five different teams that have won first place, but there the numbers actually do show like a perfect spread of teams, and it's crazy. Like most of the time, there's usually like a clump up top, maybe a clump in the middle, and then just like some lowers. But this one literally just goes straight down it. So from bottom to top, Desi and Kayla unfortunately are at eleven. April and Sarah at ten. But this is where it kind of gets interesting. So Cedric and Son are 7.25. Eric and Daniel are 6.6. .6, Joey and Tim, 6.2. Lucas and Brittany coming up with a 6. Trevor and uh, Chris, 4.8. Henry and Evan, 4.4. .4. Alex and Connor, 3.6. Cody and Jessica, 3.2. And Christian and Jen, 2.4. So Ooh. it's literally just like a continuous spread without much clumping to it. The thing that I find interesting is in leg five, uh, kind of three teams – went outside of their spectrum. Some went up, some went down. So Lucas and Brittany and then Eric and Daniel, they had a significant improvement in mm -hmm. how they had been doing. So Lucas and Brittany, before this led, their highest place was six. And then they go from six, like that's our highest, to all the way to first place. Mm -hmm. Eric and Daniel, about the same. So they were at seventh and they jumped up to three. Uh, wow. Cody and Just yeah, Cody and Jesta actually took a dip in their average. So before this last led, Cody and Jesta were 2.5, which is right there with Christy and Jen, but they actually dropped to 3.2 because of their lower placement with this. Oh, so, like, so, so, so right now, Team Extreme, clear, yeah. clear first place, <clears throat> Team Big Brother. But see, what that tells me, though, is when the numbers are that not, not so clumped, it means people are all over the place, which means I think this is anybody's game. Uh-oh. Well, I do. It's proven by five different winners, five different legs. I'm sure uh, it's co we could be heading for a new record, possibly, for the most teams to win a leg in one season. That'd be cool. But actually, no, I don't – could we? Like, at no, this point in time, is. at this point in time, the people that have been eliminated, no one, no one got first. So eventually you're going to have to start teams doubling up. The only people that haven't won a leg that's in it is Trevor and Chris and then – Firefighter. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I have to go back. Uh, I think that might be the record. But Big Brother, uh, drama. Is this real? Do you think this is real? Is this editing? What are we talking about? Is this uh, there is, this is commercial, so this is going to be editing. There's going to be okay. drama because it's a U turn, and there's always drama on a U turn lid. But I do think this is commercial drama, like sound clips and sound bites mushed together. Uh, <laughs> our boys. Uh, <laughs> The nine teams won tar four. Wow. So, so no, we can't. We, you can't beat that then. Damn. We're at a point where we can't. All right, but double U turn. Big brother in trouble, Corey. Um, I would think any of those. Yeah, I mean, I kind of had thought the same thing going into this episode that I thought there was like a clear kind of front group, and I would think Big Brother, Yale, and and Team Extreme would kind of be the targets. But as we know, it depends on. Who gets to the the board first and it depends on if it's like last season at all where uh you just get to decide to u-turn someone before even completing the task so uh, without spoiling anything uh team ocean rescue were there talks of alliances about uh u-turn boards if you get there we're going to u-turn this person etc cetera, etc cetera. i think all those talks were probably personally done within each team they weren't at this point there was I don't think there was. I know there we was, did it. There was nothing between. It's just our conversation. Um, there was obvious to us. Yeah. Was it on the clue that you read? Be careful, you turn ahead. Yes. Yeah. That, yes. That's always there. Well, I didn't know if they were trying to surprise them because uh, I think that would have been a, a nice little twist to it to just surprise. Oh, did you just show up somewhere and there's a U turn. And there's board? a U turn board. You're like, oh my god! So there's no like thought. It's just like it's meditation. It gets people like to make mistakes. I love that. I do too. That'd be fun. Uh, beer, de beer, de beer, de beer, de beer, tour. <laughs> the beer detour looks like drink it or bathe in it. You already said that, Justin. <laughs> Would you have a problem drinking it or uh, bathing in it? I want to I mean, do I, both. Right? That just sounds like a, a Saturday night to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It seems like it's going to be really fun. Uh, Team Ocean Rescue, uh, how, how has everything been for you guys? Uh, are you guys okay now? Are you guys happy? Are you guys uh, married? Is there a date going to be set? What's going on? 
we've technically only been officially engaged for a couple of days. Give us, give us a second <laughs> to breathe, Justin. Technically, I don't know if you had. <laughs> listen, it sounds like you had everything already planned. I figured you'd already have the name of your the person. What thirty-one-year-old that's been with her boyfriend for nine years has not had a, a wedding plan in her mind? I'm sorry. There you go. So I figured there'd be a date. You'd be like, yeah, yeah the perfect date. date. It's like eight, ten, twelve. Or, well, I, don't I was thinking about nine years, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we appreciate it. It's so cool. Do you guys, um, you guys, I'm all right. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm gonna go get the big uh, celebrity Big Brother names. Oh, Justin, I don't care about that. Well, I'll Google it. I gotta watch the Grammys. <laughs> oh, good. okay. All right, guys. I love you. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thanks uh, for having us. Those of you in the chat room talking junk, if you want to continue it, I'll talk to you on Twitter. I got some things I want to say, but I didn't want to give you the airtime on our show. So, all right. Uh, <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with us. We appreciate you guys spending the time with us. Team Ocean Rescue, congratulations. I hope you guys continue to kick some ass on the race and show them how it's done. Hate is going to hate. Good luck <laughs> next week with the Jody Army. You. You're going to need it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Racers Recap, we love you guys, each and every one of you for spending the time with us. Thumbs up, like, subscribe. Later. Bye. Bye. Bye.